Hi, everybody. It's Teepa. And it's time for one of the Teepa clips that you'll be able to watch and hopefully learn from. Now, typically, it's not me who's doing this piece. It's someone else. And I've already done my piece. It's a webinar. Or it's something that you're looking at. This time, we're going to take a look at one of the clips that we've had up on the website a long time, and we'll reframe it and relook at it. I've done that with a couple of others. This is one that I'm pretty committed to us taking a harder look at and see if we can figure out something different. I did one take on it before. We'll take another take and see what, what goes on this time. So I'm going to show you the beginning of the clip. I'm going to ask you what you think. Here we go. We label this a challenging behavior. And this video was created mm, in 2013. That was a while ago, like 10 years. And at the time, this was considered state of the art language. It was really different language than what people were using. So rather than saying that the person was being ridiculous or didn't make any sense or you know, had uh, aggressive behavior, was agitated. We were calling these challenging behaviors because they were observable and they were a challenge. So the behavior was challenging. Um, but that's actually probably a misnomer. And these days we would change it because 10 years later, we've learned a lot and our language has changed. We call it a challenging situation. Now, I am going to go ahead and show you the challenging situation that we're being shown and I experienced. And this was a real life situation that we ran across in an adult day health program where we were on site doing some videotaping and there was an opportunity to try out my skills. And those skills got tried out because the situation arose. And it was a challenging situation in the environment we, in, we were in with the people where we were with and with what we were trying to do and what was happening and the time of day. So I'm going to kick us off. Now, you might have already noticed something. The sound, it was the music, but then there was this. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Let's take a look and see what you notice next. Okay, so we'll pause right there because this appears to be something. I'm not sure we would necessarily see it as a challenging situation on the surface. So I'm going to give you some backstory. Um, this lady is doing this thing she's been doing for approximately close to an hour and a half, two hours. She's been at it for quite some time. and. What had happened prior to this is very early in the morning, she came in, brought to the center by her husband after a night of wakefulness and roaming and busyness. And he went home to get some sleep. Now, she's up a lot in the night and she's been up all night roaming around their house. So she came in and she sat down in one of the chairs. And one of the things they do in the community is they gather in the chairs as people come in, people sit around, they talk, and then they offered music. And this particular mu morning, they did music with instruments. And the instruments the lady picked was a maraca. So she picked the maraca. There was music for a bit. And after they did some music, it was time to gather up the instruments and people left all these chairs and they went over to have coffee and breakfast for people who hadn't had breakfast. And she was invited. And yet everyone left but her. And she stayed in the space and she didn't get out of the chair and she wouldn't give up the maraca. She wouldn't take off her coat. She wouldn't take off her gloves. Her name tag is on the back of her jacket because if it's on the front, she takes it off. So this thing where she's beating on the chairs with the maraca and going around and back and forth around the chairs over and over has been going on for quite some time. And it's pretty loud in this space. Now, now that I've provided that background, tell me what you're thinking. Now, I know you can't because you're watching a video, but what are you now thinking? Do you pick up on the challenge? 
And historically, although we were being avant-garde at the time, 10 years ago, calling it a challenging behavior was much better than some of the other things that would happen. Now, people had tried to approach this woman multiple times with something to drink, with something to do, and tried to get the maraca away. And she would whack people with the maraca and not agree to go anywhere. Um, and she only got up and started moving around after everybody left the area. So people had tried a good bit and they weren't sure what else to do. So now I'm going to play the next piece, which is where I was 10 years ago. I was a little frustrated with people. And you'll hear that in my voice because I'm already telling people things and, and gesturing in certain ways because classically, I've always gotten a little frustrated when people living with dementia get the short end of the stick. So let's watch and see what I do next because I'm a, I'm a little fussy about the whole thing. Let's take a look and listen. Challenging behaviors. That's how we see it. They're misbehaving. They have problem behaviors. We've got to do something about this. Now, I'm going to call a timeout right now because the biggest problem we have right here is you've already identified the source of the behavior. You're pretty sure it's them and what they're doing. Timeout. You need to take a step back and realize this is much more complicated than you think. And instead of being such a strong judge and jumping to conclusions, what I want you to do is back off and reframe this. I want you to realize that they're doing the very best they can to try to communicate with you, to meet a need, to express that they aren't liking what you're doing. And unfortunately, you simply see it as not getting your way. What you don't realize is that you started this very frequently in your effort to be helpful let me just say to you, you weren't as helpful as you thought you were. I didn't really enjoy the help you gave me. I didn't get it. So you have a choice right now. Are you going to continue to push your agenda to try to get where you want? Or can you take that step back and go, okay, well, this isn't working. Let me rethink. So, Tifa, what happened there was I was sharing a little bit of the staff actually did a great job. They had tried to approach her multiple times and she did whack them with the maraca because she didn't want what they were offering and she wanted to do what she was doing. And the thing that was actually the challenge was that there were some other folks that were at the program that were really tired of hearing that maraca sound and they were also tired of her messing and doing what she was doing. So staff were trying to sort of sort out and balance what to do. And they had tried the things they knew how to do. So they wondered if she could be hungry or they wondered if she could be thirsty or they wondered if she could be tired. And so they kept approaching her and trying to get her to do something different because they were also getting messages from other participants that they were ready for her to quit that or they would help her quit that. And so it raised the stakes a little bit. Now, to their credit, when they ran out of things they could think of to try, they came and asked for my help. So what did they do? In fact, instead of thinking it was her fault, they got that they weren't successful, but they were trying to balance the needs of two groups. And it is a challenging situation. I mean, they probably would have been OK with her continuing to go around, except ooh, the other challenge was that she also had been incontinent. She had an incontinent brief, incontinence brief on, and she had gotten incontinent possibly even before she came. And she'd been doing this for a long time and she hadn't been to the restroom and she hadn't got anything to eat. And her husband had reported that she hadn't had anything to eat much before she came either, except maybe some coffee. Mm. So what you'll notice I'm doing here is giving you some more information. And when we back off and it's not an emergency, when we face a challenging situation, we can start to put together some pieces of the puzzle. And once we look at this as a puzzle that we're trying to figure out, it gives us the ability to see beyond the immediate and think she's a problem. This needs to stop. And the person that's the problem is our friend who's doing this thing with the maraca. Or the problem is the guys who are frustrated with her and are saying, if we don't stop it, they'll do something about it. 
or perhaps a staff member who had planned an activity in that area that she's in now and they can't use that area. So you see, it, it, it gets to be complicated when we have dementia. And that's often the situation. It is challenging because it's not a this or a that. Now, what you'll notice that I was sort of referring to is often challenges occur around personal care or intimate care. Uh, around me helping you change that incontinence brief or get something to eat or brush your teeth or wash up or or go to another space or not go somewhere. In other words, we have an agenda. In this case, we actually have a situation where the agenda is to try to get her to stop doing what she's doing. And people have tried distraction or or redirection and it's not working because we haven't quite figured out what she's trying to communicate to us. So let's see what I talk about next, because I still agree that we need to pause and back off and look at the bigger picture. We really want to stay curious and not become judgmental, but it gets a little hard when you're feeling the pressure of trying to get something to happen. So let's let's see what happens next in this one. So what you want to do when you experience a behavior, a behavior you're not liking, you need to, whoa, take that step back, take a deep breath, let it go, and realize now it's time to kick in the front of your brain and to become a really good detective. Try to figure out what might be driving what you're seeing, what you're hearing, what you're feeling, and what they're feeling. What maybe you're smelling and they're not picking up on, what they're tasting versus what you would be tasting. Because what you want to do is realize that you need to see it from their side. And once you see it from their side, you try to be in their shoes, figure this out. Suddenly, when you see things, hear things, experience things differently, and you make that choice, that decision to do that, huh, oh, Oh, the uh uh-oh becomes an uh aha because you can start to realize it's the setting, it's the care, it's the gem. It's who they were before this all started. There's lots of pieces to the puzzle. Your job, if you want to do this well and do this over the course of this condition, is to stop the judgment, time yourself out, and reframe this behavior. Go from a challenging and frustrating, I just don't understand why she's doing this, to pausing for yourself, getting some help, maybe getting somebody else to take a look with you because maybe you just can't see it because of who you are and how it works. But what you're going to do is take that step back, look more broadly, and at that point, make a decision. Okay. So that part sounds pretty good. What I'm going to do now, though, is share something we've developed since then, which is puzzle pieces. And I'm actually going to show them to you. I mean, yeah, we're going to talk about the puzzle pieces. So what I was really emphasizing there is the value of really trying to see this from this woman's point of view, really trying to get it from her point of view or from the two guys who are complaining about it. What's going on for them? What are they seeing? What are they hearing? What are they experiencing, smelling, tasting? What are they missing? So for my friend who's using the maraca, I mean, she seems to be missing the idea that she could be hungry. She could be thirsty. She could be tired. She seems really involved in this. And what I've noticed, because I paused and watched when they went and got me and said, take a look. And I've seen her go one direction, and then I've seen her go the other direction, but I don't see her pausing or stopping. And it seems like her world is really pretty small and pretty focused. I also noticed some things about her. So what I'm going to do is stop sharing for a second and instead share what I think is an important thing, which is puzzle pieces. I think it's important to look at what are the pieces of the puzzle when we want to look at this and be a good detective. So I'm going to go ahead and share what I use for puzzle pieces and see what you think. Here they are. So the person and who they've been and lots of things about them, the person's brain changes, uh, their gem state, uh, what type of dementia or how long they've had dementia or could there be other things besides dementia, like a delirium, a depression, anxiety or something else going on. 
and their overall health, wellness, and fitness, both what kinds of things they do for their body and their brain, but any other medical conditions, sensory change conditions, psychological conditions, and how they typically manage that. Now, all three pieces of this puzzle belong to the person who is living with dementia. In other words, I want to know about them. I want to understand them. Frankly, I can't fix them, but by knowing a lot about them, it can help me determine the right support and the right care. Now, if we look down below, we'll see the other three pieces of the puzzle. The people around that individual, which include both staff and family and the other participants. Um, it might also include people from the past and their role with that individual. Um, we look at how people are spending their time. What are they using their time for? Do they seem to be waiting on something? Do they seem to be working on something? Do they seem to be enjoying something? Do they seem to be trying to rest and restore themselves? Or do they seem to be trying to take care of themselves in some fashion? And then finally, we look at the environment. What's going on around the person? Does it does it support them or is it challenging them? Uh, what kind of things are going on sensory-wise, space-wise? What's going on socially? What's happening surface-wise? And what might we notice about whether that space and that place and that situation are friendly, familiar, functional, forgiving, or maybe not so much? So once we take a look at this, we can actually dig in a bit more and look a little harder because, wow, there's a lot of detail here. So I wanted to share this out and show this to you because it's not just the big picture, it's the details that matter. And there's lots of things we could start to figure out. There's lots of things we could pay attention to. What we wanna make sure is we get broad strokes across and we get something in all these categories. And if we're missing something, we wanna check around and see if we can find that out before we start charging ahead with a solution or an answer. All too often, what can happen is we think what we wanna do is change a medication. Or maybe we've got a UTI. I mean, when somebody's behavior changes. But what we might actually be looking at is something different. And if we jump to a conclusion rather than gather some more data and maybe think it through and problem solve it. But I'm not saying that we're going to take an incredible amount of time to do this. But I do think we need to take some time to do this. Let's go back and see what TIPA did. 10 years ago and see if it still sounds accurate or have we modified a little bit? Have we grown and changed a little bit? She's still advocating for seeing it from the other person's perspective. But what we'd say now is we want to see it from all the players' perspectives and try to figure out how's this coming together or how's it coming into conflict? Do we have somebody with one agenda and somebody with another agenda? I mean, is there something wrong with just letting her keep going? And what we would say now is if we just let her keep going, is that really care or is that neglect? If we try to do something and she doesn't like it, is it care because we're the care people or is it uh, almost abusive? because she wasn't really doing anything wrong, but we decided we needed to intervene because she was incontinent, because she was in other people's space, because she was doing something with the maraca. Understand she only did something with the maraca other than hit it on the chairs if somebody tried to come and trade things, take things, get too close. So, hmm. Let's see what, we, let's see what Tipa comes up with here. What are they trying to do? Are they communicating unmet physical need? There's basically five of them you want to learn about. Or an unmet emotional need. Or are you seeing the emotional need, but you're missing the physical need? Or was it something that is happening in the environment or happened earlier today? As I said, complicated. So you need some training. You need to know what's going on and what's not going on so you can quit sitting in judgment, and start using this. That's the best tool. That and your ability to bring people together to help you. So with challenging behaviors, it's not about them. 
It's about us and what we choose to do about this effort to communicate an unmet need and helping us figure out what is the need and how can we better meet it for success for both of us. Making a positive difference because we choose positive approach to the care. Okay. So, mm, Tipa mentioned there, I mentioned um, the five needs that people have and the emotional things that they do when they have an unmet need. So, let's talk about those five needs. The first is for intake. We have to take things in or we won't survive. Then when you take things in, there's things left over. So they're called outputs. So you may have to output or maybe you did output, but it's not a comfortable output. You know, all kinds of output, all kinds of things. Because you put in fuel and fluid. You may also put in medications or other things, oxygen for sure. But what you then have to put out is CO2 and urine and feces. And um, you might actually saliva or snot or tears or sweat. I mean, there's all kinds of things. We, we take things in, whatever's left over, we get rid of the waste products. Those are two needs. If you do not do both of those things, you will not survive long. So it could be something to do with the input or the output. It might be this unmet need, might be something to do with energy to spend. I have a lot of energy and I need to get rid of it or I'm out of energy and I need to go inside. I need to rest. I need to recoup. I need to restore. So wake, sleep or physical activity, cognitive activity or rest and restoration. So it turns out energy up, energy down. We balance our day and we need to balance it in about 24 hour windows. And unfortunately, there are some sorts of dementia that really interfere with that. And there are some situations that interfere with that. As anybody who's caregiving for somebody who's not sleeping at night or a newborn baby, you'll, you'll get a sleep disturbance. And when we don't get good rest, things get messed up. We, we, we don't think well, we have a hard time doing things well, and it shows, you know, in our behavior, but also often in our emotions, because we need sleep, we need activity, we need cognitive activity, we need physical activity, and then we need to rest. We're built for rhythm. Now, these other two things are a little vaguer. We need to find comfort. We don't like being uncomfortable. We try to get comfortable. Humans don't like to be uncomfortable, whether it's physically uncomfortable, cognitively uncomfortable or mentally uncomfortable, emotionally, socially uncomfortable. We don't like being uncomfortable. We try to seek comfort and we look at the environment. We look at the people around us. We look at things we can do, things we can take in. So it could be things as simple as temperatures or it could be. Now, notice she had her coat on, gloves on. So there's something about that. She's doing this thing with rhythm. Hmm, that's interesting. Um, but she's not sitting down. She's not resting. She's been doing this a long time. She was up all night. So we're, we're gathering all this data about, you know, her comfort or discomfort. She doesn't seem to be comfortable going over with people. She's not comfortable stopping. She's not comfortable switching gears. She's not, she's not comfortable talking to people. She's doing something. Not sure exactly what, but boy, there sure is some intensity there. Now, the last one is nobody likes being in pain. We try to get away from pain. And the interesting thing about pain is it could be physical, emotional, spiritual pain. And when we're in pain, one of the things we sometimes do is do something so we don't feel the pain. Or we feel the pain and we can't do anything. But it tends to make us more emotional or it puts us on automatic pilot or we try to get rid of the pain, counter irritant. So the emotions we might pick up on might be anger or sadness or a sense of loneliness or being trapped, a sense of fear or anxiety, or maybe that what I'm doing doesn't have any purpose or value and I. I don't care. I can't care. I, I quit. I stop. I doesn't matter. Apathy. 
So these emotions that we see might be covering up unmet need or they might be emotions. And it's this emotional need that I'm expressing. Now, Our Lady hasn't shown us a lot of emotion until we try to interfere with what she's trying to do. And the reason folks came and got me is they weren't having any success. So I mentioned pieces of the puzzle. So I'll show you the pieces one more time because that's really what helped me. I asked some questions. So here are the puzzle pieces. And what I asked about is, tell me what she used to do for a living. Hmm. Because I'd already gathered some other things. Um, I'm pretty sure from having watched her, it looks like she has really bad kyphosis. I bet she has osteoporosis. It's turned out she's had some hip fractures and repairs. Um, She's very underweight, very thin, and she'd been up all night. I knew that. And she doesn't seem to be aware of any of that. She did enjoy the music, but then when the music ended, she didn't know how to switch gears and go do something else. She actually wanted an environment where there weren't people, there were just things. And she's moving around in that environment but she doesn't seem to be very friendly or functional. It doesn't seem that maybe it looks familiar to her, but we're trying to figure it out. Now, what we also know, I know from spending time is that she has Lewy body dementia. She sees and hears things that aren't there. She doesn't sleep well. She's had multiple falls. Um, she, she thinks People are dangerous or causing harm, or she she has a hard time interpreting data. We also know that she's limited in what she can take in at a moment in time. Most of her abilities, from my knowledge of dementia, we would say she's pretty much in a ruby gem state right now. She seems to be going and not being able to stop. She's not showing a lot of skill, but she has some strength. She doesn't seem to be aware of what's going on in the big world, only what's right there. And trying to get her to stop has not resulted in really great outcomes. So let's see what happens when I try a positive physical approach. Oh, after I found out about her background. So let's let's take a look and see what happens next. I'll let you see it. Now remember this lady? What do you think she's doing? You see her beating on the chairs, making noise, annoying people, and you know she needs to go to the bathroom. It's been a long time. You've tried to make her stop, but she won't. What if I told you she used to clean houses for a living? Oh. I found out she used to run a housekeeping company, a cleaning company. Now, imagine that you have some challenges with figuring out objects. Could that maraca be something else? And if you were a little hard of hearing, rather than hear the maraca, you just think you're maybe using a duster, a colorful duster to dust the furniture. Oh, and I wonder if she's uncomfortable in the environment and she's leaving her gloves and jacket on because she wants layers, because she feels more protected. And she's not interacting with people because she's doing a job and she's just trying to get it done. But man, there's a lot of chairs. So let's see what happens with this kind of thinking in mind. I'm going to try substitution in a positive approach rather than trying to make her quit. Miss Leona. Now, notice where I stand. I am far enough away from her. I got her name, Miss Leona. Now, I also have something in my hands. What do you notice? Yeah, some cloths. Hmm. I've got an advanced plan of how I can go with her agenda rather than trying to push my agenda. But I've got to get her to notice me. And so far, I'm not being real successful. Now, I would tell you that more than likely, it would be great if I could be on the right-hand side because Miss Leona appears to be right-handed. 
the challenge is uh, that's sort of where the camera needed to be being quite honest. You know, this is behind the scenes. I told you it was behind the scenes. So I approached from where they could get a decent angle on her and on me. So eh, let's see what happens next. Because I'm not on her chair. I'm one chair over. I'm going to be over there. And now you're going to see me do the thing we talk about doing. Look at how short she is. Look at where her gaze is. So let's see what I do to try to engage with her in a positive way. And let's see what her reaction to me is. Well, hey there. Get out, get your hand. Get my hand. Okay. <laughs> so I say, hey there. And she says, get your hand out there. Now, is that mean or is that make sense if your job is to clean the chair than having somebody's hand in the way? Now, it's not a real polite way to do it, but I'm not sure at this point her brain is ready for polite. She's just trying to get her freaking job done. And we're making it sort of hard because we're sort of in her way. So notice what I did. I pulled my body back. And what I'm here to offer her is a cleaning cloth. And I'm going to put it right in the center of her visual field to see if that helps her figure out something different to do. Let's see. And let's see what she does with it. Hand out the way. You're trying to get him clean. Here, try this. She's a busy woman. She says, I say, you're trying to get it clean. You're a busy woman. I'm going at it from her point of view. You're busy and you're trying to get it clean. And I was in your way. I'm so sorry. Oh, here, try this. And she goes, okay. But she doesn't stop doing what she's doing because in a ruby state, you got to go slow for the change. So I put the cloth out there to see if maybe having it in the field, she would either pick it up and move it and notice I have it. Or she'll pick it up and use it instead. Let's see what happens. I'm going to try a substitution here. I'll trade you. Not yet. Ooh. Now, she hadn't stopped at all. She's still using her Morocco, her duster instead. But I said, here, try this. And it's not like she's refusing me, but it's like she hadn't quite gotten it. Now, I backed it up a tiny bit because this is where the magic happens. Visual cue, auditory cue, and only then possibly some touching. Let's see what happens when I modify the visual cue to not just the object, but how you could use the object. Let's see what happens, because that's where she's having some trouble, objects with use. Tushin here. I'll trade you. Not yet. Show her. Rub it with that. She quit using the maraca to watch what I did with the cloth. Huh. She actually quit the rhythm of the maraca, which she'd been doing the whole time. She paused and she went, oh, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, it's a cloth. You're wiping with a cloth. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But if she's had her hand gripped around that maraca handle for one and a half to two hours, I'm not sure it's going to be easy for her to let go of it when her brain is in a ruby state. Even if she wants to let go of it, it'll be a challenge for her to do that. So let's see what she says or does next. Can you rub it? Yeah. Here, rub it. We're getting there. I say, can you rub it? And she says, yeah. But she's still not doing it because she can't seem to let go and stop the things she's doing with the maraca. So this is the moment of truth. Have I connected enough to transition? Because she can't let go. And if I try to force her to let go now, and I will also say this is where I'm so glad she had gloves on because the gloves are a little slippery compared to a human hand. Let's see what happens. Trade me. Wait, trade, trade me. Here you go. Take oh, notice how I put it in front, in front of the maraca and sort of my hand is on the maraca. I'm not actually touching her hand. I'm touching on the maraca and I'm sort of sliding up the maraca. I say, here you go here. And I put it right there. And what she does is take her left hand and, and take hold of one of the two claws. Cause there's actually two there now, the, the two claws I had. And 
now let's see. It, it, it's sort of close. She's almost not going to agree, but now. This. All right, get it. You got it. Now trade out. There you go. Ta-da. It's the one cloth. I didn't do the second cloth. She didn't take the second cloth. She took that cloth in her left hand, but now she's going to put it over in her right. And she said, give it. And I said, here you go. And at the same time, I slid the maraca out of her right hand. And let's see what she does. Ta-da. Now rub it. Now I show her. And there she goes. There we go. Wow. Now that just looks like normal cleaning instead of the weird thing with the maraca beating on the chairs, irritating other people. We're better because what changed? So I'm curious, what's changed for everybody else in the building? I, I couldn't hear you. <laughs> oh, I never stop messing with people, do I? What changed is there's no longer the beating of the maraca. So that's not irritating people anymore. They can go about in their environment without hearing this background noise that for people living with dementia in a wide open environment can be incredibly distressing because they don't have the ability necessarily to tell background from foreground and it's loud and it's repetitive and it's interfering. So that's not happening anymore. Let's see what happens next, because really, I'm still thinking about what could be her unmet need. I know that her back has got to be killing her. I know that after doing this for a couple hours, she's got to be exhausted. I realize she's either very, very wet, which, yeah, or she's got to go to the bathroom. She could also be hungry and thirsty because she may not know that. We know that people don't have a good sense of hunger or thirst sometimes, especially at this point in the condition, but that could be driving her discomfort or even. This woman could be in a lot of pain. And that could be why she's irritable and having a hard time. Or it could be she just can't friggin' figure out how to get her job done so she can be finished. There are so many chairs in here. So let's see what I come up with to see if I can be helpful to her. People good. are less annoyed, not Perfect. so much noise. And she's Beautiful. cleaning. Now I want to reinforce it. That's yep. good. That's good. Two more to go. Still haven't met. You're doing a fantastic job. Her unmet need. Wait a minute. Do you think my eyesight is that bad that when I looked down that line of chairs and there were five of them, there were I only saw two? Or do you think I was giving her a reasonable number? Just two chairs, the one she's working on and one more. I want her to get done and I'm actually guiding her down this line of chairs. But I'm going to do something to see if I can get her to only notice two chairs. This is where knowing that she has either binocular or monocular vision as far as how much she can take in in a moment of time is super helpful. You also noticing this left hand, she's tired. Oh man, she's supporting some of her weight there. I also said, wow, you are doing an amazing job. You are doing a fantastic job. Two more. You only have two more to do, which is sort of like when you're running a marathon. Yay, I'm almost finished. Thank you. And she really liked to be done. She just never quits until she is done because she ran the company. How many times do you work when you're exhausted, when you run a company? A lot. So let's see what happens next. One more substitution. Nicely done, Leona. She needs to get finished Ooh. with this. Boy. What'd you notice about my voice? Whoa, boy, you're oh nicely done. Wow. Whoa. Who's showing her tired and great work and whoa. I'm doing what I want her brain to start thinking about doing, which is recognizing being tired, recognizing almost being done, recognizing doing a great job so she can be successful with her work and she gets a chance to rest. So she's going to find the foot rest, the hassock. You are good. So we can move on. You get this one? Watch me, I'm sneaky. That's it, good, good. Oh, look how I created the last chair. There are no more chairs after this chair because I turned the chair around 
And because she's only seeing this small world, I create the world that allows her to be finished. She's done. She's almost done. So let's see what happens. See if she does indeed feel like she's almost done. I visually eliminate the task. Whoa. Woo. That is beautiful. You did a fantastic job. Oh, did you notice now that she's turned around, I'm on her right side. Yay. I've gotten her to where I am now on her preferred side. Look at her using her right hand. She's cleaning the very edge of my heavens. She is leaning over really far and I'm down there just in case so that I'm in a guard position just in case she doesn't keep her balance. But I've kept my hands to myself. Boy, though, you're doing a great job. Let's see. Man, you're a good cleaner. Here. Thank you. All right. Well, come with me and we'll sit down and take a break. Oh, God. I... Wow. She hands me the cloth. I take the cloth. But rather than just take the cloth, I also get to hand under hand support. I am going to support her. And I said, wow, you did great work. Let's take a break. And she is like, oh, yeah, let's take a break. And this woman who had been viewed as sort of non-cooperative, not willing to engage, let's watch what happens. I know you're ready for I'm one, right. aren't you? Now, oh, before boy, she goes to sit down, down, though, we have a place to go. I get a hug. I get an acknowledgement that Leona is so glad that we're going to go take a break. Leona is so glad to have a friend who noticed how hard she was working and that it's time for her to take a break. And Leona has company, but it's company that respects her and knows what great work she does. And now... Girl, you worked hard. Oh, God. You are one of the hardest working women I've ever yeah. met. Uh -huh. Well, Lord knows. Let's go to the ladies before we sit down, though. Okay. I'll let me just say that Leona doesn't usually agree to go to the ladies no matter what. You know what? Let's go to the ladies before we sit down and take a break. Mm. And maybe we'll get something to eat. And maybe, in other words, how did we come out of this challenging situation? Well, it was challenging until we figured it out. Bottom line, when we see things as situations with curiosity, and we use puzzle pieces to try to solve it. And we pull the team together and we look at everything we know and what we don't know and what it could be and how could we explore it. And we use a positive physical approach, a positive personal connector, positive action starters, and realize that when we put the puzzle pieces together well and figure out the right support and the right care, people can shine. So. I'll take you out with the end of the video just so you don't feel like you missed anything. But I hope my reshoot on this old video was helpful. Behind the scenes sometimes is one of the most important places to go if you want to try to really figure out exactly what's going on. And yet, next time, it could be something completely different. I have to be open to the possibilities that. You know, sometimes you get it, and sometimes you're still trying to figure it out. Here we go, wrapping it up. Okay. Ah, uh, we changed the challenge to success. Yeah, we can always learn more. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this was a helpful retake on that video. And I hope. Maybe as you move forward, you have more questions than you know answers. And so feel free to connect if there's something we can do to be helpful. Ask a question. We don't guarantee we know an answer, but we're willing to explore alternatives with you and take out the puzzle pieces and see what we can do with them. Take care, all. See you soon. Mm -hmm.